depends how loud you can shout. Hi, everybody. I'm not a very loud speaker, so I will use the microphone. Um, my name is KB Buzzer, and today I'm going to talk to you about how your tech team can achieve better outcomes for the planet. And we're going to do this by digging deeper into the topic of digital sustainability, which I do recognize are two very, very broad topics. So I'll do my best in the time that we have together. Um, so firstly, I'd like us to all just take a deep breath, leave the day behind us. Um, and I'd like to acknowledge that we are meeting on the lands of the Wurundjeri people. And I'd like to pay my respects to all First Nations people um, and their elders past, present and emerging um, and recognize their deep connection to country. Um, big thank you to Deep Tech Melbourne and happy birthday and Stone and Chalk. Um, Melbourne's so cool. It's so cool that we have this place to meet and, and learn. So throughout my career across agencies, the public sector, the private sector, I've always had a passion for the environment and always sort of managed to tack on sustainability to the work I did in digital because I also love working on websites in marketing. And the more that I've got to learn about digital sustainability, um, I actually think we're a lot more connected than you may think. And that's what I want to talk to everyone in the room about today because I think we all use a computer. Obviously, some people have more influence over the decisions in technology than others. Um, but yeah, I'd like to share with you a little bit about my journey. Um, so I now work for a carbon accounting platform called Climate Zero. So I do recognize that sustainability is more than measuring greenhouse gas emissions. And I really love this graphic because I think it's true in the public discourse at the moment that there is a little bit of carbon tunnel vision, um, but sustainability is many, many broad topics. But today I'm gonna to be focusing largely on environmental sustainability and there will be a little bit of a tendency to talk about emissions. Um, the reason I think that there is such a big focus on emissions is that governments across the world are looking for data-led solutions to slow down climate change. Um, so this graphic on the screen is based on um, the greenhouse gas protocols um, mapping of the value chain. So many of you probably haven't gone into this level of detail around carbon accounting. Um, I think the point is that um, this is a scientifically uh, based methodology that governments across the world have agreed um, this is how we're all going to compare and measure the impact that our businesses and organisations are having on the environment. So when it comes to digital sustainability, um, we're talking largely around scope three emissions and around the downstream activities. So um, if anyone's more interested in understanding this, please ask me after the presentation or um, in, in the q and I don't want to go into too much detail on carbon accounting. So is this microphone a little bit sketchy? sketchy? <laughs> anyway, I'll try my best not to move around too much. Um, so let's sort of narrow into the, the digital footprint of um, the, the environment. And there's fantastic research being um, done by an organization called greenit.fr. It was published in 2019, but I think it's widely uh, referenced because the methodology is really, really robust. And they've broken down the digital world into these sort of six categories. So in terms of the greenhouse gas emissions of the, the digital world, 66% um, are attributed to the end users. So that's manufacturing of our devices. Um, and then the device usage around 26%. The network, manufacturing of the network equipment contributing around 2% and then network usage 17%. Um, data centers do have a big focus, but in terms of the breakdown from this study, 1% is attributed to the manufacturing of the servers and then usage around 14%. 
I think what is really important to note in a more recent study published in 2023, um, the information and communication technology sector um, has found to be using around 4% of the global e electricity in the use stage in 2020. Um, and just for some context, that's around the same amount of electricity that the entire um, population of Great Britain used in a year. That attributes to 1.4% of global greenhouse gas emissions. But the really important thing to note is that it is projected to actually grow to 15% of global electricity by 2030 uh, due to artificial intelligence um, in the demand for data centers and the consumption of devices. So you're probably wondering, what can I do? I build, like myself, websites and manage a SaaS product. So what I want to now share with you is a little bit of my journey in what I've learned about and what I've put into place in my own um, websites and products. So my background is largely in marketing and now a product manager. Um, so these are just a couple of examples that I've found to be really effective. Um, the first one, and it's a big one in the world of marketing, is use video intentionally. So as you can imagine, video is quite energy and data intensive. So we need to move away from auto playing big, beautiful videos every time you open a website. Um, secondly, use the appropriate coding language and learn efficient code structure. If your code is beautiful and well-structured, it will have less bloat, it will have higher performance, and it will be better for the environment. Um, good design in UX based in web, web content accessibility guidelines, so WCAG. Um, again, this is touching a little bit more on the social side of sustainability, but I think good design is also good for the planet and also better for um, a more diverse and equitable community. Um, know where your data is stored. So have conversations with your leaders about what data centers you're using. Um, where, where are the servers based? Are they in good proximity to where your customers are? I think this is a big one. So um, when I worked for a big global engineering firm, a lot of their servers were actually based in South Africa because a lot of their clients were global. So that made sense for them because the requests were coming from all around the world. Moving it to Australia, it didn't really make sense. Um, spring clean your files. How many of us have just duplicates on duplicates of drafts just sitting in servers? You don't really need them. Like they are sitting in this, you know, proverbial cloud but that's actually a server in a building. So if you build into your practice, like maybe every quarter I'm actually just going, going to go in and delete files, I think on scale that can have a really big impact on the demand of the data center um, expansion. Um, a big one is fix and repurpose hardware. So as you saw, the embodied card hardware, um, sorry, the embodied carbon in our hardware actually does use natural resources. So for example, I just replaced a lithium battery in my computer, but if you're working in an organization that's replacing assets just because the lease is up, well, maybe you need to think about that practice and if that's really good for the environment. Um, build sustainability metrics into your KPIs. So at the moment, um, the current version of my business's website is not performing as well as I would like it to. So a big KPI for me this, um, this quarter is to try and improve that. And that's something I'm gonna be measured on. Optimize your images. So make sure when you're in marketing that you're not putting things into the world that are really large megabytes if there's a better um, file size that you could be using. Um, there's great tools out there that can help reduce them and um, yeah, vectors are great, but there's also new file formats that are coming out all the time that are, are lower um, in megabytes. Does it need to be created with generative AI? You tell me. <laughs> um, 
and I, and I put that there because do we always need to be running more queries with, with open AI? Um, just think that every time you do that, there's been a stat that's thrown out that uh, eight water bottles worth of water is required to, to cool their, their servers every time we um, make a request. Um, last but not least, ask your suppliers what their sustainability strategy is. Um, I recently asked Amplitude, like, what, where are you serving? Where are you storing your data? Um, can you give me an answer around this? They weren't, but maybe I've sparked a conversation. Um, so just sort of one thing I want to highlight is there's so many resources in the world around this topic. Um, the Green Software Foundation has an awesome short course that has these six principles laid out. Um, carbon efficiency, energy efficiency, carbon awareness, hardware efficiency, measurement, and climate commitments. If you can think about these when you're building products, you're on a really good, good track. Um, so a couple more of resources on digital sustainability sort of to get you started, um, you know, if you're interested in learning more. The sustainable web design model, um, it's a model for estimating digital emissions. Um, whole grain digital, Mighty Bytes and Belief and the sustainable UX blogs, they're all great agencies and great thought leaders. Um, Belief who's in the room today, they've got really great um, resources. There's a really awesome open source community around this topic. Um, CO2.js, another great resource. And then most recently, there's been a product leader playbook, uh, sorry, a climate product leader playbook put out um, for free that you can look at if you're a product manager. Um, so tonight's agenda, I think what's really important, find your people, have a chat, someone next to you, if you sparked an idea, um, choose what resonates. This is an extremely broad topic. I can't be an expert in all of it. None of us will ever be. So find what your niche is and educate yourself. Reconnect, reconnect with those people and then create your roadmap. So in closing, um, I really wanted to share this beautiful painting with you. It's one that I have stuck in my kitchen. Um, it's called Gaia by Alex Gray. No, Dali didn't make it. It is a painting. <laughs> and it's of Gaia. So Gaia is Earth Mother in Greek mythology, but it's also a um, theory created by James Lovelock, who um, was an English independent scientist, environmentalist, and futurist who had some really interesting things to say about Earth systems, but also the role that AI can have in addressing climate change. Um, his recipe for human salvation also included a human's retreat to megacities and AI controlling the climate. So have a look if you're interested. Um, and I think just think about what side of history do you choose to be on? Thank you. So we probably have about like 10, 10 minutes or so for questions. So far away. Who wants to ask? Oh. Hi. Hi. Great talk, thank you. Um, the stat around technology, um, energy usage was what, 2020. I think we're ordering a bit of a weird. Do you know of any stats that were from less strange years when it comes to like how we can change the world? So 2019 was so the question was um, that the research paper I quoted was from 2020 and it was a weird year in terms of our data usage. I totally agree. Um, am I aware of any more most recent? So the reason I chose that particular paper is the, um, the what is it? The sustainable web model uses that to reference the way that they have been ranked. Um, the carbon efficiency of websites. So I figured that they were the experts and they'd probably be the most up to date in terms of the, the research and what is um, verified in terms of the academic discourse. 
So I'm not sure, but I'm sure there will be more coming in the future. Yeah. Sorry, just to jump in on Joshua Relief. I work with the Sustainable Web Design uh, group on that. We just released the fourth model for calculating emissions. The new model is based on data from 2023. Sorry. Yeah. How much does it? Sorry? What's the percentage? <laughs> um, off the top of my head, not sure, but it is it is all documented how the uh, formula helps calculate emissions. Next question. Uh, this will save you repeating it. Just Thank you. Just. So, uh, in in terms of the uh, in terms of using um, machine learning models, I think you mentioned, um, yeah, to. Um, Ask us all to have a think about whether or not we actually do need um, generative AI and uh, hit the open API, uh, open AI uh, API endpoint. Um, have you had? Um, have you had? Do you have any insights into um, uh, the energy efficiency of building your own models versus um, using someone else's models and then retraining them for to fit, you, fit your purpose? Uh, and then have you like? Uh, had the opportunity to take a look at on what are the pros and cons of um, weighing those two um, ends? Um, great question. I am not going to pretend that I'm an expert on training models, but what I will say is you need computers to train those models, right? So one of the principles from um, the Green Software Foundation is using um, energy when it's uh, most abundant. So if you are training that in a data center that is powered by renewables, for example, um, pick when you need to train those models and do it when there's a spike in energy in the grid. So that would mean that, um, yeah, you're using like more renewable energy than off the grid. So that's probably the, the only advice I can give at this point. Thank you. Maybe one more question. Thank you. Great talk. Um, I think great advice as well about becoming more conscious of how the stuff that we do on screens like contribute to the already fucked up climate. Um, it, and it's awesome to like take things on personally and like make those changes yourself, delete the big files, like stop stop pretending like the cloud isn't an actual thing that like actually costs the planet quite a lot. Um, and maybe this is more of a question for the pub, I don't know, but I, I do feel like that, that's somewhat similar to like the whole carbon footprint kind of messaging that went out. It's like you, you as consumers, you do better, you do better. But um, yeah. Do, I suppose my question is like more holistically and maybe like higher level, how should technology change to um, have less of a negative impact on our climate? I totally agree in the sense that we're always pushing things back onto the individual to change. And I think that that is wearing quite thin and it needs to be about institutional change but i think us as individuals can actually influence and make a big impact in our organizations in terms of how technology can change i think that's a much bigger philosophical question that needs to kind of be grounded in in specifics um, which is why i've tried to talk more generally about my own experience and i what i will say is that little decisions are scalable and yes, again, that's back to the individual. I think it's a bigger existential question around like, what are we creating as humans? I'm not sure I have an answer right here. <laughs> Why not? In <laughs> Maybe in the pub. Well, one more question. Whoever was first. Again, this is a sort of an open-ended question, but again, first things first, great talk and all. 
um, it's about actually the source of uh, energy that we're getting in uh, with every passing year we see that there is a, a global trend in transitioning to renewables so at least can we have this peace of mind that the energy we are getting into the grid is actually more cleaner and it's more you know uh environmental friendly so maybe you know uh, let's just not focus on maybe just you know changing that all i'm all in for sustainability and conservation but don't you think that already like in terms of energy transition that is the right step that's been taken by humanity that's your opinion absolutely we need more renewables in the grid i think the point around how much embodied carbon is in the solar panels that we need to generate that energy still leads to the point that we need to be thinking about using less first um and then using what we have more efficiently and um consciously so i think in australia our grid is still a mix of non-renewables and renewables um but i think the key thing around sustainability is it's often about stopping which is why i kind of wanted us to do that at the start and thinking about not just using things because they're available but being a bit more intentional with them so maybe we'll leave it at that mm -hmm.